One of the common questions I've been asked is, you know, why is my dog pale? Their gums are kind of pale. And so most of the time that means you've got a dog that's anemic. And in this video I'm specifically talking about a condition and it was formerly called AIHA, autoimmune hemolytic anemia. It's now known as immune mediated hemolytic anemia. And in that, that's where your dog's own immune system is attacking the red blood cells, causing the anemia. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, welcome. Once again, for those of you who don't know, you can say hi to Pippi, who's one of my neighbors or friends dogs, who's being awesome in YouTube videos. All right, Pipster, let's get going. What would you see? So first, I'm just gonna show uh, Pippi here as an example. We got her up here on the table to start. All right, little Pipster. And typically, in a dog that's anemic, for the most part, they're gonna act weak, lethargic, they don't have any energy. Because I mean, you need your red blood cells, which are carrying oxygen uh, to provide your cells, just so you can move around and just survive. So the most common clinical sign in any anemic person, dog, cat, period, is you're weak, tired, you have no energy. Um, often then, secondarily, what we would see clinically if you were to go to further ahead and further examine your dog or your cat, is that one of the first things you're gonna do is be lifting your dog, your cat's lips. We're gonna do here in Pippi. We're gonna look at her gums. And I think here I'm gonna make a little bit more of a close up. You can see her gums are nice and pink. This is a sign of a sort of normal, healthy dog who's not anemic. She's got great, a great blood pressure, and lots of circulating red blood cells to produce this nice pink color. And there is Pippi on the close up. And you guys can see there, there are nice pink normal gums. Um, so the ones in, do you see when I press there and you see where it's kind of white? So when our dogs are anemic, either you'd see the gums be very sort of pale white, kind of like when I put my finger on top of her, put her canine tooth, they, they turn a real white color. They would look like that, or they may be very jaundiced and yellow which is often typical in immune-mediated hemolytic anemia. The other thing that you'll often see changes in is then secondary looking at the tissue around your dog's eyes. So if we're opening Pippi's eyes, see that white tissue just above her cornea? That's called her sclera. And in dogs that have icterus, so that secondary yellowing or jaundice, and that's a result of the immune system, which is in there attacking the red cells. And the liver can't process it fast enough, so you get all this pigment called bilirubin building up. It shows up, the body can't process it, so you're seeing it throughout the body tissues. A real common place you're gonna see that, though, is in this white tissue around the eye, or the sclera. So it'll get really yellowish. So let's just review sort of what's happening in immune-mediated hemolytic anemia. So the red cells are being attacked by the immune system. And secondarily, what that's causing is a number of different things. First of all, the obvious is a drop in the number of red cells. Um, your pet is weak, lethargic, tired, they have no energy, they're not wanting to play, they're probably not eating, they may not even be interested in even drinking. Um, secondarily, the red cells themselves, they normally have a lifespan where you know the, they're produced, say they're produced from the bone marrow. They get put into your dog's blood system, they're circulating in the blood system, they carry oxygen, um, take away CO2. And they'll reach, normally reach the end of their lifespan, they get processed by the spleen, by the liver, and then they're excreted from the body. But in this immune-mediated hemolytic anemia, they're being attacked, they're broken down far too early, the liver gets overwhelmed, they can't process, this, process part of the end product of the red cells being broken down, a thing called bilirubin. So you'll, you'll see that secondary yellowing, or, or also known as icterus. You might see that yellowing, as I said, you know, around your dog's eyes, you know, the sclera of Pippi's eyes. You might lift up the lips, it might be sort of yet whitish, or maybe be yellowing in here if they've got secondary icterus. Third, what, what can happen is all that bilirubin can then overwhelm the kidneys. We can have sec uh, that can be affecting the kidneys, causing kidney disease. Um, fourth, you can have, because of all this clotting that's going on throughout the body where you've got the red cells being attacked, 
these red cells were think these parts of these blood cells are clumping together, you can actually get these amboli or blood clots throughout the body. Um, and that can then secondary affect blood flow to the organs, you know, causing organ dysfunction once again. And then on top of that, you've got, there's this big organ called their spleen, um, sort of located in here. I'll show you how busy where it's found. It's here, up in here in our, I mean, it lies along, more prominent on the left side of our body, just underneath their ribs. So we're wrapping around this way. The spleen is trying to process all those dying and dead red cells, and it gets overwhelmed, so it gets really enlarged. You get this dramatic decrease in the number of red cells, and there isn't just enough red cells to carry enough oxygen for your dogs to survive. Um, so really, really, the biggest point I'm trying to make with all of this introduction, it's a very serious disease that, you know, it doesn't mean go ahead and try this small herb or, you know, some homeopathic remedy. First of all, I want you to, to recognize if your dog is acting really strange, such as in demonstrating some of those clinical signs, you got to get them into your veterinarian as soon as possible. Um, second, realizing that it's a life-threatening illness. It's not something you want to just, you know, like, take lightly and treat with a few simple home remedies. Um, and there's a varying differing studies. Some, some are saying 20% mortality, some are saying as high as, you know, 60, 70% of these dogs will die with this disease. So something that needs to be recognized soon, be treated fairly aggressively, and in most cases, it's gonna mean a conventional veterinary medication, you know, a combination of something that's gonna suppress the overactive immune system. Many of the dogs, when I saw in practice, we started them on a steroid such as dexamethasone, followed up with another steroid, prednisone. Um, they were also given in combination. They didn't respond to that. They may be given another immunosuppressive drug, you know, such as azathioprine, maybe cyclophosphamide. Um, along with that, you know, often a conventional medication to help deal with those secondary blood clots. So how does the disease get diagnosed? First of all, you're going in to see your veterinarian. They're going to do appropriate blood tests, like they see that your dog is anemic, see the actress. They're going to suspect that. They go ahead and do a thing called a blood smear, where they do uh, take a small blood sample, they put it on a slide. Um, they should be able to see a type of cell called a spherocyte, and it's a really smaller than normal red blood cell. These spherocytes, you see that in combination with the dog that is anemic, um, and they're often icteric. It's pretty classic for immune-mediated hemolytic anemia. Um, there are additional veterinary tests that can be done. There's a thing called autoagglutination, where sometimes you can actually just see physically on the slide, you can see the blood clotting together. So it, there's so much, um, there's so much, we're called autoagglutination, where the blood is clotting together so quickly because there's so many autoantibodies attached to the red cells, it clumps together. And that's pretty typical then. It's like likely he's got immune-mediated hemolytic anemia. And then secondary, there's a veterinary blood test, one called a Coombs test, where they can test for the presence of autoantibodies against the red cells, you know, thus confirming the disease. So let's say your dog's been diagnosed with this disease, you've gone through the course of medication, they're in a remission. First, we don't want this to be recurring. So the couple of different alternatives I'd have you consider and think about. First of all, in dealing with the blood clots themselves, there are two holistic options that seem to be reasonably effective. No, they're not going to be working as well as something like aspirin, um, but they can be benefit. They, they could be beneficial, and I would get my dog on them as well, especially if he was diagnosed with it. And I would just keep him on them. Um, so one is here. This is the fish oil capsules. Uh, the omega-3 fatty acids. You're looking at fairly high doses. We're looking at about a thousand milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight daily. Um, we know they have specific anti-clotting, so anti-platelet, as well as anti-fiber properties. Secondly, you can look at also adding in vitamin E. And so many of the times you, actually, you can actually get uh, an omega-3 fatty acid or a fish oil and vitamin E supplement. So vitamin E dose, we're looking at about 100 international units per 10 pounds of body weight daily. Um, ideally, you just get a supplement in combination. And that in particular seems to be very beneficial uh, to prevent these secondary blood clots. Then lastly, in practice, most of the time when I saw it, we would treat these dogs. And my experience generally is most of the dogs responded and they seemed to recover. I wasn't looking at you know 80% mortality. I'm more like, you know, 10 to 
But that being said, perhaps a disease has changed and it's unique for every dog. I mean, it could be really serious for your dog and they could be one of those ones that could die from it. Uh, in some of the guys, they can recover from it, but it, it, it can come back. So then that would also have me thinking, is there anything else I can holistic, holistically give that could potentially prevent this from happening again? So there's a couple things when I'm looking at research-wise uh, that seem to be beneficial. One would be green tea, but in particular the flavonoid in green tea called ECGC. And it's one that seems to be fairly immune protective, at least, and at the very least sort of normalizing that immune system. So it's not gonna to become too overreactive. So that's a supplement I'd have you consider. So the dog ECGC dose is one milligram per pound, given twice daily. And that's something most of the natural holsters are gonna have. So that's one I would have my dog on, at the very least once daily, ongoing, especially if you've been diagnosed with that disease. The second supplement I'd have you consider, and I went and did a fair amount of research, just seeing which ones seem to be potentially effective and maybe beneficial, um, specifically for this type of immune-mediated disease. It's called quercetin. So it's one that I've discussed um, for a variety of different conditions, more commonly for these dogs that are itchy, and they have inhalant allergies. Um, but it's also shown to also sort of modulate the immune system. So what we're trying to do is, you know, take this overactive immune system, just have it react normally. We want it to attack things that, it, that shouldn't be in your dog's body, but not, not, and not attack healthy cells. So kerosene also appears to, be, to do that as well. So you're looking at kerosene and dose, we're looking at sort of five to 10 milligrams um, per 10 pounds of body weight and that's given twice daily. So thanks you guys for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets. If you have to do so, I encourage you to click up there to subscribe to my channel. Click down there uh, to subscribe to my newsletter. And when you do that, and you sign up for my newsletter, I can send you my free books and my free videos on how to heal your pets at home with my top natural remedies.